Uh, my name's Kelly, and um, I'm a rag and bone man, I think. I, uh, I work in the music industry mainly, either managing artists or designing and art directing within the music industry. And that's simply a ruse for me to be able to construct and uh, cycle old cycles. It's a means to an end. One of the primary drives behind cycling was financial. They were the fastest things on the road in their day when they were invented. So suddenly people had come across a sport where you could cycle at 35 miles an hour and nothing else on the road would do 35 miles an hour. So it was the equivalent of Grand Prix. The first thing that came in was gambling, betting on cyclists, racing. And they were expensive things, so only really the upper middle class and the wealthy could really cycle but what was unique about them was that women could cycle at almost the same time as men and it was seen as daring but perfectly acceptable and the posters on the wall here lay testament to the amount of women that could go out and cycle it wasn't seen as just a bloke's thing and there was a great appeal for women to cycle and whole bikes and clothing and bloomers and everything invented to go with the Trade, but there was never any military push behind the development of the cycle. Although the army could use bikes by the turn of the last century, the development of the cycle didn't come from a military need. It was more of a sport and a pastime and a pleasure thing. And I think that changes the way that the the, 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 the reason why people develop things for bikes is because they look good or they smell good or they work good, but there isn't this kind of thing of it needs to be more efficient because we need to go out and kill the Japanese <laughs> with these machines. And even that one military cycle over there, the BSA paratroopers bike, that was from the Second World War and they got the contract to make these. And there's all kinds of stories about them never being used. People used to use them to cycle around the paddocks and things, but to actually jump out of an aircraft with several kilos of bikes strapped round your shoulder when you, you've only just learnt how to parachute is probably fairly unlikely. And they were only designed to get you as far away from the drop zone as possible and then you dumped them in a hedge and met up with your pals and went off and, uh, and carried on the wall. So it's a, it's a very passive hobby, I think, cycling. It's got a passive past. Oh, the Pedersen I've done the most miles on because if push comes to shove and I, have to, I select a bike on depending on my mood and the wind and, the, you know, I don't need mud guards today so I'll take out a bike without any mud guards and not worry about getting covered in muck. But the Pedersen is just an all-rounder. You can... It's, it's, it's the, if I had to keep one bike, it would be that bike. It's the most comfortable, graceful, well-thought-out machine. They're really strong. And I've had it the longest, so I've, I've built up a relationship with the bikes. And it's the one that served me the best, I think. All of them are ridden, and I try and get a ride in on every bike every year. Otherwise, it shouldn't really be in here. There's something about museums that I don't really like. And stuff decays so quickly. Everything does. Metal, rubber, leather, everything decays. So I think you may as well use it while it's decaying and get fun out of it than just sit there watching tyres go flat. And <laughs> I think there's always someone who's going to ride these bikes. So I, I've done well, on this bike, the Sun, a guy was riding it and I looked at it and I just said it's the perfect 1930s heyday of cycle touring bike. I said, if you ever sell it, can I buy it? And he said, fine. And he phoned me up in a year's time and said... I'm fed up with it and I haven't ridden it at all this year. And so I thought, great. You can court bicycles away from people. <laughs> they smell great, cycles. And, and uh, they, they're very tactile pieces of equipment. And I'm quite surprised sometimes when I meet other cyclists and I'm looking at their bike and they wonder what you're doing eyeing up their bike. And I'll say, oh, you've got so-and-so and a such-and-such. And they... They don't have any interest in the machine. They only really have interest in the journey that they've made, where they started off, what time they did, and which is great, you know, that's half of it. But for me, if you don't have an interest in 
what you're riding, it's you're missing out on quite a large area of of the fun. And uh, likewise, you see people with a, a particular kind of bike. It says quite a lot about them. They're like little portraits. Really. Well, the Ordnance Survey maps are fascinating, and they cover such a tiny area of the British Isles, each one. But when you live in the map, and we live right in the middle of that sheet number 155, it's a vast area of terrain. So, I don't know, the collector in me just said, I want to collect every road on that map before I die. So I plan to cycle every road on that map, which I thought would be quite easy to do, but I'm now cycling 30 miles in order to do a one-mile strip that I hadn't done before. And there is a feeling, actually, when I know I'm on the strip, I think, I've never been down this road before. And I can't remember half the roads I've been down, but it is like, a, I don't know, it's, it's just a way of giving me an excuse to get out and go and tick off a few more roads. <laughs> Wow. And they're all, I'm colouring them all in black, so they become anonymous. When they had colours, like A roads and B roads and the yellow roads and stuff, they had real character to them on a map, and now I'm making them all black. So I can't tell where I am half the time, because I use the red roads to tell me roughly where I am, the brown roads to get me closer, and then the yellow roads to tell me exactly what I'm on, you know. And getting the red road is the hardest, because it's the busiest, it's the least pleasant road to ride on so I've done most of them in a hurry just to get them out of the way <laughs>